I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Wednesday, May the 15th, 2013. The New York Times reports that a senior Israeli official hinted that Israel was possibly considering further military strikes in Syria to stop the transfer of advanced weapons into the hands of Hezbollah militants. This follows Israel's alleged airstrikes in Syria earlier this month, also targeting Iranian weapons heading for Hezbollah. The New York Times cites the Israeli officials saying today that the transfer of such weapons to Hezbollah would endanger the entire region, and that if Bashar Assad were to react to Israeli military strikes targeting such weapon transfers by attacking Israel either directly or through his terrorist proxies, quote, he will risk forfeiting his, forfeiting his regime, for Israel will retaliate. The Times said the official who had been briefed by high-level officials on the serious situation in the past two days declined to be identified, citing the need to protect internal Israeli deliberations. Meanwhile, the Jerusalem Post reports that satellite images obtained by Israel Channel 2 TV aired in Israel tonight, showing damage caused to the sites in Syria during the alleged airstrikes on May the 3rd and 5th. The before and after images taken on February the 22nd of 2012 and then on May the 6th of 2013 show a destroyed container terminal and storage area at the Damascus International Airport, which the Israeli Air Force allegedly targeted because of Iranian weapons being transferred there to Hezbollah. Israel has not commented on those strikes. U.S. Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs Wendy Sherman, who is the top American negotiator with Iran, addressed the Senate Foreign Relations Committee this morning regarding Iran and its threat to Israel. Sherman said that if Tehran chose to make an atomic bomb, it would take them a year to do so. She also said there was still time for diplomacy with Iran, but that it was running out. As far as Iran's threat to Israel's security, both from nuclear weapons as well as from its state-sponsored terrorism, Sherman said we are in close and constant contact with Israel to coordinate our policies and have taken unprecedented steps to protect Israel's qualitative military edge, including support for the Iron Dome defense system to stop Iranian-supported militant groups from firing Iranian-supplied rockets into Israeli communities. The Jewish Daily Forward reports that top officials at the Conference on Jewish Material Claims Against Germany which processes Holocaust restitution claims, were alerted to a fraud scheme by its own employees, but only did something about it years later. The scheme involved millions of dollars going to recipients who made false claims for restitution and several claims conference employees who approved those false claims, for which they received a cut of the restitution money. The ringleader of the scheme, Semen Domnitzer, was convicted last week with two others on federal fraud charges. And it was revealed during testimony at his trial that back in 2001, top officials at the claims conference were alerted to the scheme through a letter, after which a review was conducted of several questionable claims and serious concerns were raised about Domnitzer and others. But Domnitzer said his accusers were liars and top officials decided not to look into it any further. The fraud scheme went on until 2009 when a senior claims official came across other questionable applications and at that time the claims conference hired a law firm to investigate uncovering the scheme. Top officials at the claims conference at the time of the fraud declined to respond to the foreword about why the allegations were not pursued initially. Claims conference spokeswoman Hillary Kessler Godin told the foreword that the incident had been thoroughly reviewed all the participants in the fraud had been found guilty and that the matter was now considered closed. Altogether, 31 people have pleaded guilty or have been convicted on fraud charges in connection with the case, including Domnitzer and his two co-defendants. And finally, 14 national Jewish organizations sent a letter yesterday to U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry commending his recent efforts highlighting growing anti-Semitism in Hungary. The letter refers to Kerry's recent human rights report, which spotlighted the growing problem. It urged the Secretary of State to keep the issue of intolerance and discrimination on the U.S.-Hungarian agenda and to raise the matter personally in Kerry's direct dealings with Hungarian officials. The rise in anti-Semitism in Hungary has been dramatic recently, particularly with the rise of the far-right Jobbik party. 
Signees on the letter to Kerry include the Jewish Federations of North America, the American Jewish Committee, Hadassah, the Jewish Council for Public Affairs, the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, the Rabbinical Assembly, and the World Jewish Congress, among others. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Wednesday, May the 15th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader.